When Eric Pankratz of Foam Lake, Saskatchewan decided it's time to get his combine out of the elements, he appreciates having this recently completed farm shop. Here farm foreman Sheldon Chuckerlin is helping Eric navigate safely into the building. The shop is 60 feet wide by 120 feet long with 20 foot high walls. Completing this building was spread out over a number of years here on the Pankrantz farm, allowing them to make sure it was done the way they wanted. The concrete floor is about six inches thick with two inches of rigid foam under it. It'll pretty well handle any, handle any uh, heavy equipment. We, we didn't spare anything. We knew this was going to be a once in a lifetime shop project, so we, we did it right. While putting in the floor, they also included a very useful drainage system. The whole shop is sloped into this area here, um, and it all runs into a pit, and then it gravity flows out to the southwest corner of the shop. Um, that way, when we, we pull in, especially in the winter, when we pull in um, with the semis and super, super B, we can drive right in here and melt things down overnight. They built anchors right into the floor, which comes in really handy when they need to pull on something or straighten something out. Six foot piling below each anchor and just for strength so you don't jeopardize uh, the floor when you're pulling on it. The floor includes a pit for working on their farm equipment. The pit is about 42 inches wide, 16 feet long, and a little over four feet deep. It is wired to give them lighting when working under equipment, including an explosion-proof light to meet the fire code. We positioned it here so we can come in the east door and drive right over it. It's, it's handy for working on uh, changing oil and rear ends, uh, changing oil in general, and, you know, semis. And the shop has a total of four 18-foot high drive-in doors for ease of access to almost any part of the building. The single doors on the east side and the north end of the shop are both 20 feet wide. On the south side of the shop, they have a pair of doors. One is 17 feet wide and the other is 26 feet wide. We can drive equipment right through, either from the south to north or north to south, of course, but uh, also that beam in between the two doors is called what, a, what you call a removable mullion. And what it does is, once both doors are up all the way, then that, that mullion slides to the, to the left on a rail at the top. They figured such a large opening would allow them to bring their widest equipment into the shop, but unfortunately, combine headers keep getting bigger. Our idea was to originally so we could bring our combines in here with our 36 foot headers and since then we've gone to 45 foot headers so um, of course we can't get in here now with our 45 foot headers. Inside the shop they put in a mezzanine which measures 18 feet wide by 50 feet long. Eric says this is a great way to maximize the utilization of their shop space. Living accommodations for seasonal workers, uh, as well as a kind of a coffee room, get-together room in the morning, plan the day, at the end of the day, wind down a bit. And we got some parts storage up here, some lockers. Uh, this is kind of our grain grading area and, uh, and a, a map there, just keeping inventory of our our grain in the different bins in the different yards. Also on the mezzanine floor, they have a pair of oil storage pods, which each hold about 275 gallons. These pods are easily accessed when oil is needed. And uh, one's for hydraulic oil, one's for engine oil. And it just comes, it just drains using, using gravity down to the two spigots here. Um, we've got them labeled engine oil, hydraulic oil. And we also have uh, the hydraulic oil dyed red. Um, our oil supplier supplied us with, with that oil. Um, that way there's no mistakes being made, what kind of oil you're putting in. If you have a, a leak on a machine and you can see the oil 
brown or red, it, it helps you figure out what's leaking. The shop is insulated to R18 in the doors, R35 in the walls, and R50 in the ceiling. This helps maximize the efficiency of the in-floor heating system. For fuel, Eric considered using flax straw, coal, and wood. And as it turned out, we went with natural gas, and I'm very happy we did go with natural gas, just for the maintenance end of things. Um, and, and for the efficiency end of things, uh, boilers have come a long way in the last 10 years as far as efficiency. We heat this entire shop for the whole year for under $1,500. In the near future, he plans to take advantage of the efficiency of this boiler and utilize it for drying grain. We're going to run underground lines to some of these bins and have radiators in front of them to dry the grain. And it'll work out well because you normally we're drying the grain in late August, September, October when the shop isn't needed to be heated yet. He wanted a bright interior light for doing shop work, so he chose T8 fluorescent bulbs. The shop is equipped with a variety of useful tools to get the work done quickly, especially during busy seasons. We've got about a 50-ton press here that comes in handy straightening things out. Uh, Saves us running to town to uh, the machine shop. And then we got our, our own tire changer here. Um, uh, we tend to sometimes go around the clock seating, combining. You had a flat tire and tire shop's not open. We, we do it all ourselves. They put up the shell of the building in 2003, but a damaging frost reduced their crop the following August and forced them to delay the project. By the winter of 2012, they were able to complete the mezzanine and the rest of the interior. He says the total cost of the shop was similar to buying a new combine and is definitely money well spent.